Uh, morning everyone, so I am Jasmine, I'm going into my sixth year of teaching in September and what's kind of always been at the core of my um, decision to be a teacher and the core of my classroom is diversity and that is primarily um, due to the sort of lack of diversity that I encountered as a student um, at school, at university, as a trainee teacher um, and looking at making education as diverse as possible for different ethnic groups but also for um, students and people like myself that come from and are proud of coming from working class backgrounds. Um, so that's really what I want to think about today. Why is it so important for us to be a, to diversify education? So just change the slide. I think that Malcolm X sums it up perfectly for me that education is the passport to the future but tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today and i think that in an ideal world we all believe as educators that we are preparing effectively for the future but following um the recent sort of outcry and support from the black lives matter movement i don't think that we are and i think that we need to have honest and frank conversations about what it means to prepare for the future and to make our sector as diverse as possible and that for me includes thinking about what we're teaching and who we're teaching it to, how are we enriching and including our pupils and our staff, and who are we employing, who are we putting in those classrooms, who are we putting in positions of leadership, who are we using to, as representation for our staff and our pupils, because it is up to us, it's our future and we need to make sure that we prepare for it as effectively as possible. Um, so just reflecting a little bit on my own experience as a student and as a teacher, um, I feel like this image kind of sums it up perfectly and I feel like this image is often used when talking in conjunction with ability and rightly so, um, that we have sometimes an education system that doesn't always reflect the ability and the talent of everybody individually and I don't feel that our education system always reflects the diversity of our country. Um, we are a multicultural society and it's absolutely fantastic and superb but that isn't always represented in our classrooms um, at teacher level, at pupil level, at leadership level. Um, for example when I was at, um, at primary school um, in the, the 90s I was one of maybe sort of eight um, children that weren't white um, and at one point I think I was the only child um, in that school that was not white. As a result of that, I remember entering school in reception, um, being able to read fluently, um, but was placed in the, the lowest reading group possible, coming home with like a picture book, um, to which my mum was absolutely furious. And that kind of example of, of being held back from, uh, I guess, my, my background as a working class girl and as a mixed race girl. Um, throughout my time um, at school, I encountered four educators that weren't white. Um, and only one of those was a female. Um, so that kind of level of representation was just never there for me um, as a student. And I really felt that, particularly at university, um, probably where I felt the most excluded within education, even though having uh, secured the grades to get there, I, I felt almost stupid sometimes when I spoke and that was down to, I guess, partly my accent being, you can probably hear it, strong Birmingham accent, um, but again, that idea of not being represented um, ethnicity wise. Um, so when I went to my first uh, teaching placement, when I was training, I could not believe the diversity at the school that I was at um, on the staff body. It was absolutely incredible. And the naivety in me actually was kind of like, oh my goodness, there are this many teachers that aren't white. And that sounds absolutely ridiculous. But when you kind of take into context my experience, I'd never experienced such a wealth of diversity at teacher level. And I feel that having um, trained there for six to, six to eight weeks and then completing my NQT year there was really the success that I needed um, to, to kickstart my career. I was um, promoted at the end of my NQT year to third in department. Um, within sort of my RQT year, I started to pick up uh, roles within um, literacy and leading across literacy and the whole across the whole school um, i led staff training a number of times 
um, and then found the courage to to jump ship even though I didn't want to and I loved the school um, but to be 10% braver and to go for that second in department role which I am currently um, still a part of um, and also just thinking about the curriculum and how the curriculum really isn't as diverse as it should be um, I've been trying to do a lot of work over the past year or so um, within my department to really try and sort of make a curriculum as diverse as possible so for example one of the units that we do in year seven now when looking at slam poetry is looking at the idea of voices of survival and looking at contemporary uh, songs and pieces of art that actually promote different um, ethnicities different cultures different backgrounds so our pupils have that experience and that our staff are able to have that experience too Change the slide again. Oh, I can't change the slide for some reason. Oh, there we go. Um, so when thinking about my experience um, within education from pupil level right up to teacher, I, I feel that this quote again sums it up perfectly. It's this idea that diversity is having a seat at the table, which I did and I had. And if I didn't have that, I wouldn't have been able to get to where I am. Um, but then I do realise that I've had to work harder than some of my peers. Um, I've had to fight harder to be heard. Um, and that element of inclusion hasn't always been there. Um, having that voice at my training school and where I did my NQT, it was absolutely vital for me. And it meant that I'm, no, I'm now in the position to feel confident to talk about bringing diversity to education. And I think that we need to make sure that we collaborate and we communicate with our um, our staff, our pupils, but also our community and our parents. Often there will be um, parents and people in the wider community that have a connection with school that didn't have a positive experience. So when they come into parents' evenings or open evenings, they may feel that that level of representation isn't there for them or their children. And we need to make sure that we change that. Um, we need to make sure that we diversify and decolonize the curriculum. It is not right that I did not read any more than one black author at school and I still remember it, it was Chinua Achebe, Things Fall Apart, that's the only black author that I read at school. I didn't even know who Maya Angelou was until I was 21 years of age at university and that makes me feel both embarrassed but also annoyed that I didn't have that, ex that exposition of that at school and we need to make sure that that's not the same for our pupils. Um, we need to champion our students into higher education, into further education if that's what they wish to, um, to pursue and we also need to make sure that we champion our talented teachers into leadership. I'm really lucky that I've felt supported um, and having that voice and felt like I've belonged as part of a, um, a school setting but I know for a fact that that's not the same um, for every other um, black, Asian, ethnic minority teacher or teacher from a working class background who may often feel pushed out or that their voice doesn't have a place and that just isn't something that we can allow going forward I don't think. I think that it's really important that as teachers and as pupils that we have that sense of belonging and that we have that sense of, of feeling a part of a community and I know that I felt that in my uh, first school and I definitely feel it in my second school too and we need to make sure that that is the same for all staff everywhere. And I feel that we really need to create the sector that is the drive for change in society because education is where everything starts. And if we don't become that drive or that force for change, then how can we expect the rest of the world to follow? Um, so thank you uh, for, to Women Ed for this opportunity to speak and thank you for listening.